Within each of us is the power to mold, mold ourselves and mold our environment. It is up to each of us to begin this molding process with a final product in mind. And it is within our power to work it and form it every minute, every day, every month, every year. By using your mind and your abilities and your attitude to work a little each day on molding your life, you'll soon see how magnificent your power is to gain those small advantages each day. The little steps it takes to build up to success. You know, we spend hours in a gym conditioning our bodies to look and feel their best. Very little time developing our most valuable resource, our minds. And the more you condition your mind for success, the more you will have. Computer programmers have a term they use called garbage in and garbage out. A badly programmed computer is doomed to spit out bad information. And that's the same with your mind. My old friend Dr. Norman Vincent Peale put it this way. This is one of the greatest laws in the universe. Fervently do I wish I had discovered it as a very young man. It dawned upon me much later in life, and I found it to be one of the greatest, if not my greatest discovery outside of my relationship to God. The great law, briefly and simply stated, is that if you think in negative terms, you will get negative results. If you think in positive terms, you will achieve positive results. That is the simple fact, he went on to say, which is at the basis of an astonishing law of prosperity and success. In three words, believe and succeed. The day you say, I'm going to change my health with my diet and all the rest, and I've heard that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, why not start with an apple? And the day you start with that first apple, your attitude can change, your self-esteem can change, and you can honestly say, I'm on my way. I'm never going to be the same again. I'm not going to walk the old road anymore. I'm going a new way. It just doesn't take much. An apple can do it. Something simple that you commit to and do it. And you can say, I'm starting to make the changes. Everybody can, but not everybody will. So here's what I called it. The magic and the mystery. The magic is you could start at the bottom and go to the top. The mystery is why wouldn't everybody do that? That's what the storyteller does most of the time. It leaves so much to our imagination. I wonder why that is. That's good for conversation. What's unique though, living in our country, there's so much example everywhere of what ambition can do properly channeled that it hardly leaves anyone with an excuse not to at least maybe try or you certainly have to give up on the fact, know that it can't be done, which is not true. It is possible to start with a dollar and become a millionaire. It is possible. It is possible to start with nothing and become something. So one of the things in order to make this your decade, in order to reach your goals, you've got to find some reasons that make you strong, some reasons that will make you hang in there when times get rough, because they're going to get rough. It's going to be very challenging whenever you decide that you want to grow, whenever you decide that you want to go to another level, all hell will break loose. Everything that will happen, the other that can happen, will happen, and at the worst possible moment. They call it Murphy's Law. See, whenever you decide that you want to go to another vibration, it's like when you get into an airplane. The first thing they tell you to do is do what? Fasten your seatbelt. Because you're going to experience some turbulence when you're going up. And some of you are already experiencing that turbulence. Don't be frightened by that. See, whenever you decide you want to go to another level, you've got to fasten your psychological, your mental, and your spiritual seatbelt because it's going to be a while before you experience a comfortable altitude. You're going to get there. It's there. But you've got to go through this phase here. This is how you grow. This is how you develop. See, life is like a roller coaster. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go well, and sometimes they don't go well. But in the down moments, that's when you discover who you are. During the down moments, see, in this prosperous time, you put it in your pocket. In the lean times, you put it in your heart. Discipline does many things. But most important of all is what it does for you. It makes you feel better about yourself. Even the smallest discipline can have an incredible effect on your attitude. And the good feeling you get, that surging feeling of self-worth that comes from starting a new discipline, is almost as good as the feeling that comes from the accomplishment of the discipline. 
A new discipline immediately alters your life direction. You don't change destinations immediately. That is yet to come. But you can change direction immediately. And direction is very important. Discipline cooperates with nature. Everything strives. It is a common life function. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it can. Everything strives to become all it can possibly be. And that striving to become is what discipline is all about. Disciplining ourselves to fulfill our natural potential to become all that we can be. And finally, discipline attracts opportunity. Opportunity is always looking for ambition and skill in action. Discipline taps the unlimited power of commitment. The human will in action, driven by inspiration, enticed by desire, tempered by reason, guided by intelligence, can bring you to that high and lofty place called the good life. It is difficult for us to grasp the fact that ambition, accompanied by effort, is actually a creative power which tends to realize itself. Our minds are like that of the doubting disciple who would not believe that his Lord had risen until he had actually thrust his finger into the side which had been pierced by a cruel spear. Only the things that we see seem real to us when, as a matter of fact, the most real things in the world are the unseen. We never doubt the existence of the force that brings the bud out of the sea the foliage and the flower out of the bud, the fruits, the vegetables from the flower. It is invisible. We cannot sense it. But we know that it is mightier than anything we see. No one can see or hear or feel gravitation or the forces which balance the earth and whirl it with lightning speed through space, bringing it round its orbit without a variation of the tenth of a second in a century. Yet who can doubt the reality? Does anyone question the mighty power of electricity because it cannot be seen or heard or smelled? The potency of our desires, of our soul longings, when backed by the effort to make them realities, is just as real as is that of any of the unseen forces in nature's great laboratory. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, and it's necessary for you to challenge yourself to go after it and get better, and leverage the relationships that can help you get to where you want to go. But it's you. The major key to your reaching your dream, your living up to your greatness, your making your contribution, is you. If the economy is good, fantastic. If the banks are loaning money, that's great. If people are positive, that's great. You don't have any opposition, that's great. But the major key to your making things happen in your life is you. The people that are going to make it in the future, the people that are making it today, let me share something with you. History is being read, but it's also being written by people with imagination. It's necessary you take responsibility for it, that you make it happen, that you don't give up, that you don't take any objection or disappointment or defeats personally, that you keep on keeping on, that you don't decide that I can't make it because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, that you realize that's a part of the program. And here's something you've got to resolve. Say this to yourself every day. See, as long as you're breathing, you got a shot at your dream. That's the way I resolve. Say this, please. It's not over until I win. Get better. Learn how to handle the seasons better. Let's go through them. Some stuff I did on satellite many, many years ago. Let me just review those notes for you on this getting better part. Learn how to handle the seasons of life. Number one, learn how to handle the winters. But it's not just the winters of the calendar. It's not just the winters of the seasons. There's all kinds of winters. The winter when you can't figure it out. The winter when it all goes wrong. The winter when you have all kinds of hecklers on a telephone call. Right? The winter when you get that first half dozen refunds. The winters of your life. Social winters. Political winters that we're going through around the world. The economic winters that... A lot of people are experiencing these days. Personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long. It is simply called winter time. But here's what you've got to do in your own personal development, your own personal growth, and that is just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter. You can't change the seasons. But you can change yourself. 